What's up guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Spider-Man Retro Carded Wave 6 inch action figure of Tarantula. As usual, please like, share, comment, subscribe, or even hit the super thanks button. I do appreciate all engagement on my channel. This is one of the only two figures in the wave that comes with this more retro design card back, and I suppose that's a callback to the more classic looking figures of the wave. Taking a look at the figure in packaging, it's clearly placed on the plastic tray with zero accessories. So first off to me, that is already a disappointment. Now we have artwork of the figure on the card back on the left side, and we go ahead to the back of the card. There's the same artwork of Tarantula over here, and once again, a schematic of the figure. And this time, that schematic also looks quite sad because there are no further instructions to use any of those non-existent accessories. And we have a description of the character over here and finally product information at the bottom. So let's go ahead and get this one open. To open this figure, I simply slice that plastic tray off that retro card back so I can keep and store the card back easily. I'm not happy that Tarantula comes with zero accessories. He should have come with a couple of relaxed hands or some clawed hands. But I guess it's what it is, so let's jump into his sculpt. So Tarantula is given an update. Now he's ported onto the Sunfire or Deadpool body mold. Most of him is cast in a red plastic with black paint for the line work and that Tarantula logo on his torso. The new parts on him are obviously his head sculpt as well as his spiked feet. His head sculpt is decent. It's actually constructed from two pieces of plastic with the blue on top and the skin tone below. He's got white paint for his eyes. However, when you take a closer look, the consistency of the paint isn't great, the white doesn't seem to be applied thickly enough, and you can see a bit of the pooling of the paint at the bottom of his eyes as well, where the white paint actually looks thicker than the rest of his eyes. He's sculpted with a smirk, and that is brought out quite nicely by the digital printing, with black for his moustache, and a little bit of his goatee, as well as some colour for his lips. So this is a good expression for a villainous character. The back of his head, he's got those two straps that come out from his bandana and they are fixed, so you can't really rotate or articulate them. Most of the rest of the figure is a red plastic, black paints for the stripes and the tarantula logo applied fairly cleanly. But there's one small thing that bugs me which is how the legs on the back of the tarantula don't actually line up when he's actually in his vanilla stance. It only lines up when you put him in a little bit of a bend forward, so that gives him a little hunch, which to me makes no sense. His fists are cast in a black plastic along with his boots, and when you have a closer look at his feet, you can see that new sculpt with the spikes sticking out from the toes. So overall, it's a really simple sculpt. The paint applications are fine except for that misalignment on his torso, and really just having no alternate head or other accessories just makes this figure as an entire package feel a little cheap. For his articulation, he's got a ball hinge at his head so you can spin it all the way around, getting minimal sideways wiggle, and he looks down that much, as well as up. He's got butterfly joints at his shoulders so he pulls them forward quite a good bit, as well as backward pretty great. Swivel hinge at the shoulders so it spins 360 as well as coming out that much. Swivel at the bicep for 360 spin. Double hinged elbows with the pins still visible. And that's a bit distracting because the black pins stand out against the red of the rest of the arms. Swivel hinge at the wrist for 360 spin, articulating in and out. Mid torso hinge for forward bend as well as backward bend with a bit of clicking. Swivel at the waist for 360 spin, ball joints at the hips that go out that far, as well as forward and backward. And I just want to point out something that I noticed now as well. The plastic on his hips now appear to be the same softness and consistency as the other bits of plastic on the rest of the figure. I don't know why Hasbro has done this, but it's a change because usually the plastic used on those hip joints are the same hardness as the plastic that, that's used on his torso as well as his crotch piece. So with softer plastic used for the hip joints, you can probably heat these and pop them off more easily. Now he's got an upper thigh swivel for 360 spin, double hinged knees with those pins also still visible but it has good range, 
calf swivel just above the boot for 360 spin, an ankle tilt that goes up that much and down, an ankle pivot that goes outwards as well as inwards. Tarantula is as poseable as you'd expect because he's on a standard Marvel Legends body mold. He's a skilled hand-to-hand -hand combatant so he's also easy enough to pose in flying kicks. However, I do think the posability and playability is seriously limited without any other swappable hand options. Over here I have him using those relaxed hands from the Vulcan action figure. However, you have to look past the color difference because the Vulcan hands are a dark blue. Another option is to pose him with the black clawed hands that came with the Disney Plus Killmonger figure. However, these clawed hands have a texture sculpted on them to reflect the pattern on the Marvel Cinematic Universe Black Panther suit. However, the colors do match up and I think it looks pretty nice. Size-wise, Tarantula stands over 6 and a quarter inches and that's about 16 centimeters. For size comparisons, here he is with Captain America and two more recent Spider-Man action figures. And here he is with Jekyll, Craven, Human Fly, and Rhino. And for comparisons with other lines, here he is with G.I. Joe Classified series and some Star Wars Black series. There's nothing surprising about the way Tarantula feels in hand, coming across as a zero effort release because he comes without any accessories, yet sorely needs some alternate hands. Even the basics couldn't be done right with the misaligned logo on his torso. This ends up being a barely passable release by today's standards and doesn't feel worth the regular retail price. Please like and share this video, let me know what you think in the comments below, subscribe to my channel or even hit the super thanks button. Thanks for watching, take care and stay safe.